Greetings to you all. Good morning and welcome to Sunday worship at St. Andrew's Church Air. Today being the 24th day of January 2021. We gather here to worship God. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Let us worship God. Yes, my soul find rest in God. My hope comes from him. Truly, he is my rock and my salvation. He is my fortress. I will not be shaken. My salvation and honor depend on God. He is my mighty rock, my refuge. Trust in him at all times. You people, pour out your hearts to him, for God is our refuge. Let us now turn to God in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, delighted with our good fortune, we come to accept the gospel invitation. Your deliverance surpasses all the loftiest visions of the prophets. Your generosity exceeds the widest expectation of the psalm singers. Your grace outstripes the hopes of the great lawgivers as the sun outshines a campfire. Glorious are you, God of unspeakable good news. With every breath of our being, we come to give thanks and praise through Jesus Christ, our hope and salvation. Most holy and most loving God, Sometimes we come before you not very aware of any particular sins which we need to make confession. Rather, we are acutely conscious of the general stupidity and corruptibility of the human race of which we are integral parts. Every day we are entangled in a web of distortions and compromises, feeling inadequate in the face of evil and injustices in the community and the world. We have been part of the wrongs done and the good left undone. By the initiative of your grace in our Lord Jesus Christ, may we all know the forgiveness of sins the healing of the Spirit, and in our hearts, the renewal of belief, that yours may be the honor and praise. And as we gather before you, enrich our worship with service and our service with worship through Christ our Lord. Amen. of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Come bow before Him now with reverence and fear. In Him no sin is found. We stand of the Lord, the Holy One is here. Be still for the glory of the Lord is shining all around. He burns with holy fire, with splendor he is crowned.
Mark chapter 1, verses 16 to 20. After John was put in prison, Jesus went into Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God. The time has come, he said. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe the good news. As Jesus walked beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and his brother Andrew casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. Come, follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. At once they left their nets and followed him. When he had gone a little farther, he saw James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John in a boat, preparing their nets. Without delay he called them, and they left their father Zebedee in the boat with the hired men and followed him. Amen. Let us prepare our hearts for the word of God. Jesus said, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Let us pray. Gracious God, as we turn to your word for us, may your spirit rest upon us. Help us to be steadfast in our hearing, in our speaking, in our believing, and in our living. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, drawing from the message of last Sunday, we are called to be disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just disciples, but disciples making disciples. Our topic for today is becoming fishers of men. In Mark chapter 1, we hear the story of the start of Jesus' earthly ministry. Jesus is beginning his ministry just as John the Baptist is ending his ministry. Both John the Baptist and Jesus called on men and women to repentance. Notwithstanding, one would think that in choosing those who will become his followers, Jesus would have chosen educated people or perhaps some of the religious leaders of his time. But Jesus Christ chose ordinary people, people who were less esteemed in the society to become his disciples. God calls ordinary people like you and I to become the church, the body of Jesus Christ in our world today. God doesn't necessarily choose those who are particularly gifted or capable or who are made of the right stuff. Jesus chose them. He chose ordinary people because he saw qualities in them that were needed for discipleship, for a successful discipleship. Qualities like diligence, patience, experience, perseverance, courage, humility, and faith. Beloved, the call of God is not asking us to do something that is alien to human nature. It is not like a lion tamer asking the bees or forcing the bees to sit on a pedestal or to leap through a hoop of fire. The call of God, the call to obedience, is like calling a fish to swim, a bird to fly, or a child to play games. It is a call to be true to our deepest, holiest nature. Take the case of Jonah for an example. 
Then the word of God came to Jonah the second time, saying, Arise, go to Nineveh, that immense city, and preach to it the message that I give you. Jonah is not asked to do something alien to his real human nature. He is called to go to Nineveh and preach repentance and forgiveness of sins to his enemies. To desire one's enemies to undergo repentance and forgiveness of sins is not, I repeat, not something alien to human nature. God calls the unlikely and says, Follow me, and I will make you fishers of people. Discipleship, beloved, involves taking a leap of faith into the unknown while at the same time trusting Jesus to lead us to the right direction. Jesus took the strengths and weaknesses of the first disciples and taught them how to be his servant, walking in his power. He does the same thing to you and I today. He takes our strengths and weaknesses and uses them to do his work in our world. When we become eyes, ears, hands and legs of Christ in the world, only then do we become really useful to him and useful to the world, useful to people around us. Mark's gospel captures the sense of urgency that Paul conveyed to the Corinthian churches in 1 Corinthians chapter 7, Jesus was operating under a sense of urgency. He had so much to do, but not enough time to do it all. He had an immediate message that required an immediate response because the message was so life-changing and so wonderful that the people who heard it could be immediately moved to repent and respond and acted on their faith. That was the reason why the disciples answered his call without hesitation. What response, beloved, will we make to Jesus when he enters our lives and invites us to repent and believe. He announces a call and invites you and I to answer in a new way of thinking and acting. The Holy Bible then becomes our rule book explaining how we are to behave and spells out in detail what is expected of you and I. Our Lord invites us to follow and trust him. We don't have a road, a road map into the future, but we follow Jesus Christ who leads the way because we know he will take us to the future safe. We must answer the call right away when we are called to do so. Only when, only then will we be enriched spiritually with all spiritual blessings and strength. Jesus will teach us just like he taught the early disciples and just like the disciples in, in turn taught other people to follow Christ. The response will be immediate when we know by faith that Jesus' death on the cross 
has conquered our sins and defeated Satan. We know by faith that we belong to Jesus because he sought us out. Just like he sought out the first disciples, we are to spread the good news of our Lord Jesus Christ. The good news that Christ loves people, not just pastors and deacons and elders, and not just choir members, and not just Sunday school teachers. He loves all people. And we are all called to love people irrespective of their class, gender, or tribe. They could be neighbors. They could be beggars on the streets or homeless alcoholic people. Beloved, we are called to make Christ's love known to all people irrespective of who they are or where they stay. And the only way to do that is to love those people as Jesus does. We are called in the same manner. We are all the same, no matter our education or ability or experience or enthusiasm. We remain sinners who need to repent and hear the good news of acceptance and forgiveness in Jesus Christ and in him alone. We need to hear it over and over again. We need to hear the news about God's love for us in Jesus Christ, whose life and death on the cross have brought salvation and redemption to us all. We need to be reminded that we are called to repent and believe and follow. Repentance loses our hold on things of this world and tightens our grip on the things of God. It involves embracing the source of life itself. It brings the fullness, the ultimate freedom to us wherever we are. Christ invites us and calls us to follow him. And he is now sending you and I to become fishers of people. Let us do the work of our Lord while it is day, for night cometh where no one will be able to stand and walk again. Amen. Let us pray. To God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit, be all praise and glory now and forever. Amen. In my wrestling, in my doubts, in my failures, you won't walk out. Your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea In the silence you won't let go In the questions your truth will hold Your great love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea Oh, you are the peace in my troubled sea 
bring our prayers of thanksgiving, intercession, and the Lord's prayer before God. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, O God, for gathering your eternal church, for guiding the ministry of your word, for granting your Holy Spirit, and for giving everlasting life. We thank you, O oh God, because you gave us all things, because you poured out upon us all the blessings of soul and body. To you alone be glory, honor, and praise. Loving God, we come to you to lift up to your throne of grace all those that are downcast and distressed. And those that are lonely, needy, and weary. Lord, we pray that your loving care, comfort, and help will surround each one of them. Refresh their hearts and souls, we pray, with the truth that you love them so much and that you died for them and that you have promised to comfort and succor each one in times of need. Gracious Father, we link our prayers with your consign for the host of starving, homeless, and forsaken people, people who ache out their short lives in misery. We link our prayers with your consign for people who feel lost without a sense of direction, ignorant of your spiritual resources. Dear Lord, look upon the misery of your people and send help from heaven. We bring our prayers and concerns for those around us, especially anyone who is bearing a secret burden or pain. Please, dear Lord, hear us and let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Eternal God, keep our prayers going even when we leave this place of prayer that our daily experience may be enhanced by our prayers and our prayers enriched by our experience, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us when we pray to say, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you, beloved, for joining in the service of today. I trust that God has planted his word in your heart. I encourage you to answer the call of God. Call others to do likewise. The blessings and protections of God will always be with you. As we prepare to leave this place of prayer, to move to the wider world to fulfill our calling. Let us pray together. Loving God, we ask you to fulfill the word sown in our lives today. Make us fruitful every hour throughout all the days of our lives. Give us a faith as wide as the world, as high as the stars, and as deep as the soul of Christ. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen.